Today we're going to be getting into an amazing looking hot rod scheme for your minis. So let's jump into it. What's up hobby friends? I'm Jason the Hobby Viking and you're watching Den of Plastic. So if you're like me and missed out on getting the Indominus box set, uh, you've probably spent a lot of time thinking about color schemes uh, while you wait for it to arrive. And today, I've got a way for you to create a striking army that's quick to create and looks amazing on the battlefield. I'll be using an old Space Marine model for this, but you can use anything with armor plating on it, really. I think it would look great on a tower or a Necron army. But before we get into it, I'd like to say a few words about the main paint that I'm using on this. Up until recently, Color changing paint has only been available to those with hot rods or elite cars and the money to splash out on, you know, like a six grand paint scheme for their car. But in more recent years, there's been a lot of color changing paints come onto the market. There's a lot of um, ones through GameStop World and Vallejo. Today, I'll be using Spastic's premium paints. I know, the name is terrible, right? But uh, this is a color changing paint that uh, is easily applied. You don't need an airbrush. It's just you know, straight from a rattle can. This particular color is orange, purple, teal. Um, although I've noticed the orange doesn't come through that well. Anyway, uh, if you haven't experienced color changing paints before, they, they basically change color depending on the angle you look at the model or the surface that it's painted on and uh, this one in particular looks really slick when sprayed over a, a miniature. So first up I come in with a gloss black coat of paint just to cover the model really well. The reflection in the gloss will give a, a better end result to the color shift. And here you can see I decanted the rattle can into a pot I did this because I wanted to use an airbrush to get a finer control over what I was spraying onto the model. In hindsight, I didn't need to do that, and you'll see coming up further that I actually changed that method. So here I apply a nice thin coat around the model. You can start to see the, the blue coming through. A little bit of the purple, but um, it does suggest that you use three coats to, to coat this model to bring it to completion. Just a light shimmer, you can still see a lot of the black shining through there. Here we are the second time and things don't go so well. Spraying this into the little pot, it got everywhere. Now this is an acrylic lacquer. So the lacquer itself is sticky and, and very tacky and that stuff went everywhere over my desk. And uh, so the third time around, I decided not to do this and I uh, instead used the rattle can. But here you can see, the, uh, the paint is starting to build up layers now and you can see the blue and the purple really start to, to come out on the model and really start to shine. Round three, I take it outside and I just use the rattle can. I really didn't need to use such fine control with the airbrush for this model, so a rattle can will do just fine. Here you can see the really nice shine that's coming off on the, the purple and the blues, just beautiful hues through there. Can't really see any of the orange, but um, yeah, the, the model is looking stunning. Next up, we bring in resin sand texture medium. I just apply this to the base. You don't have to do this step if you want to really get your models out on time. You know, pump them out really quick. But uh, I chose for, for this single model, I come in with a resin texture. What the resin texture does is uh, it's got a, a sand grain in it. 
uh, and most of that liquid, the, the binding material in it, it actually uh, evaporates and you're left with mostly just, just sand uh, type texture on the, on the base there. I apply this in a thick sort of layer just to give some, some depth variation and just to make sure I get a good covering on the base. Then I come in with some cork bits. So these are just pieces of cork I've pulled off of a cooking pot holder uh, that I picked up from a cheap store for two dollars. Really easy, great basing materials. You can just pick it off, pop it on, paint it up. It looks you know, really good. So while that's still wet, I just pop that in there and it'll set hard. While it's setting, I come in with some black, just hit the bolt gun with some Abaddon black. I also hit some of the other parts on the models, but I, I do cover that up later on. Now I will admit, I did forget to, to edge highlight that bolt gun at this stage. Um, I have since done so. Here's the part that really makes it pop. I come in with some Balthazar gold just for a really shiny metallic look to it. Really sings against that blue and purple look and uh, gives it that shiny hot rod look. Balthazar gold is, is one of my favorite metallic paints from GW. It's uh, it's really, really beautiful, shiny, shimmery kind of gold. Gives it that yellow look, uh, which plays against the blues and the purples, and, and just looks amazing on these models. a couple of thin coats just getting a really good coverage on that. Moving on to the shoulder pads now. Hitting just the trims with that gold. Really starting to make that shoulder pop. Moving on to the Ultramar symbol on his shoulder. Now I've slowed the video down here for a good reason. There's a, there's a good lesson to be learned here coming up very soon. There it is, bam. I've gone off onto the blue shoulder pad with some gold. Now, if this happens to you, don't panic. Just clean your brush out, get it a nice damp brush, wick off the excess, and then just dab away at it. It should lift right up. Nothing to worry about. And I continue on.
And that goal, it's happened again. I've gone off the trim and hit the blue of the armor, but it was in a pretty concealable area. Um, nothing too much to worry about. I managed to scrape a bit of it off with my thumbnail, but yeah, it's not too much of a problem. It won't be seen. Up next, it's time to hit the gun, the backpack, the belt, and the helmet with some lead belcher. Come in to the eyes with some red, changing a few different tones, finish it off with a, a white highlight. Just touching it up there with a bit of Agrax Earthshade wash, covering some of the, the golden parts, give it a bit of a, a bit of depth to the colour. Now I don't have any basing pigments of my own, so I took to my art supplies and uh, grabbed some chalk pastels, ground some of that down, just with using some sandpaper, and uh, dipped into a pot. Now I grabbed three different colours here, just to give some variation for the colours on the basing. Next I apply this to the base, making sure to cover it at all, to get a good thick covering. Uh, you can see there I've painted the cork black. Now in hindsight I should have painted the, the base black, but uh, I cover it all in the end. I do apply two or three coats with these basing materials, so it, it creates a good covering in the end. Just making sure there that you've got a good covering. And when you're done, I come back in with some isopropyl alcohol. I use this just because it dries quickly, but in hindsight, I probably should have used something else, maybe an airbrush flow improver or some thinners. Um, and that's because isopropyl alcohol can be used to strip paint and it actually does start stripping some of the paint off the base. Up next, I come in with the other color before it sets, and this is just so that it uh, helps bind the two colors together. You don't need to add anything after that, it'll set on its own.
tap off the excess and that's it done. Clean up the base and you're, you're ready to paint the trims black. Now I tried to capture this under the lighting conditions I have and it just didn't show up as well as I, I would hope. The purple wasn't really showing so you'll see I grab the camera in a minute and, and take you for a, a bit of a spin around. But in real life that, that metallic colour is looking really sweet as you can see by the coming up um, shots from outdoors. Okay guys, there you have it. That was the amazing hot rod look color shift paint scheme for your minis. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. Ask me anything, I'll try and get back to you.